The Brave New World of Social Media Censorship Marjorie Haynes Thanks to Marvin Amori for a perspective overview of the same seismic shift in free speech poli policy making over the past two decades. Today, as Amori points out, private companies that run social media sites and search engines are the main arbitrators, arbiters, arbiters of what gets communicated in the brave new world of cyberspace. And despite their good intentions and their claims to a, a free speech friendly fa philosophy, these companies employ terms of service that censor a broad range of constitutionally protected speech protected speech. I will begin by offering a, a few examples, then I will address those two laws that are so critical to online expressions, section 213 of the Communications Decency Act 1, CDA, and, the, and section 202 of the Digital Millennium Copyright Act 2, D. MCA, generally known as Section 512, its location in Title 17 of the U.S. Code. I will con conclude with a note of the con continuing importance of New World Times Company S v. Sullivan's and also thought on how the new arbitrage of speech might improve on that much celebrated decision. First, Facebook, Google and the impenetrable world of the private, private censorship. Facebook, as Jeffrey Rosen has said, yields more power today in determining who can speak, who can speak than any Supreme Court justice, any kind of or any president. Facebook's statement of right and responsibilities provides you will not post content that I is hate speech, treating, treating or pornographic, incites incite vi violence or contains nudity or graphic or, or grat gratitude violence within Facebook's broad hand. It's true, resides a few categories of speech that the First Amendment does not protect. Treats, incidents, in incitement, and some subcategory of pornography and might be constitutionally unprotected obscenity under a local community standard. But there is no judicial determination of illegal illegality. Just the best guess of Facebook's censors. Facebook's internal appeals process is mysterious as best, at best. And most of that, of, and most of what Facebook proscribes, is protected by the First Amendment. Its power to suppress new ima images or check one example has a huge potential impact on communications about virtual arts including cinema and photography as well as sex education and discussion of sexu sexual politics similarly judgments about what content is grat gratuitously violent or hateful towards a religious or et ethnic group can vary widely and the result will be subjective and unpredictable unpredictable censorship of literature arts and political discussion amori tell us, tells us that facebook's lawyers have created a set of rules that on uh, that hundreds of employers employees can apply consistently without having to make judgments calls the details of these rules, however, we do not know. Unlike censorship decisions by government agen agencies, the process in the private world of social media is secret. 
it is probably true that Facebook has a first amendment right to censor whatever it wants in order to maintain the kind of social space it wants. Facebook, Facebook is not and arguably should not be considered a common career and thus it show, should not be forced into a legal straight jacket that should prohibit content based terms of service. As several st students in the in my 2013 censorship class at the NEAU pointed out when we debated this issue, it is a competitive social world out there, and if people are unhappy with Facebook censorship policies, or YouTube's, to or Tumblr's, or Twitter's for that for that matter, they will they will gravity gravitate to another side i suppose the same the same might be the might be said about rich engines a business long dominated by google arguably people will move elsewhere if they find they find google's results too censorious but first they have to know what is being censored in addition there is a big distinction between a social media site that has a certain claim in to its own character and tone and a search engine that is basically a sophisticated mechanical tool. Yet Google's customs research term of terms of service page of page for the United Kingdom which applies the UK to UK websites that use Google search engine engine to provide a web a website specific search tool prohibits any pornographic hate hate related violence violence or a frequent catch all category offensive content content deciding what is offensive is up to Google Google censors general searches as well it's its default is the moder is the moderate settings of an internet filter called its safe search describe it as a designer to screen sites that contain sexually sexually explicit content and remove them from your research results google assure assures assures that while no filter is 100% accurate, safe search helps you avoid content you may prefer not to see or will rather your children do not stumble across. And anyone familiar with internet filters knows not 100% accurate is a large under, under, understatement. And in any event, what business it, it is of a search engine provider to decide that its huge diversity, its huge diversity of users, may prefer not see, not to see. What is boost and spiders determined based on fluid, fluid technology is sexuality, sexually explicit. In December two two two. two, two 2012 Google made an it made it impossible to inter interline disable safe search in the United States although it claimed that users could still access sexually sex sexually explicit content if they made their research their research requests more specific for example by including words porn but what if you are searching for explicit sex education information, not porn? You will not know what the safe research is blocking. There is good reason, I think, for Congress or the FCC to prohibit search engines from imposing filters. Instead, filters should be available on requests. The FCC could recategorize search engines as common ca careers just as it is just as it should categorize internet services providers as common careers which which will ob obligate obligate them to accept all contents and refrains for censorship second sections 
213 and 512. As Amory explains, section 2000, uh, 213 of the CDA immunizes all inter internet users who determine disseminate contents nor of their own creation for liability for the defamation, invasion of privacy and virtuality virtually everything else except violations of inter intellectual property. Those social media sites like Facebook and research and search engines like Google do not have to censor anything. In fact, one major aim of section two, 213 is to discourage private industry censorship so that free speech can prevail of the internet and those actually responsible for criminal and tortuous speech rather than than the pipelines through which they communicate can be prosecu prosecuted or, or sued but section thir uh, two 213 does not prohibit private censorship instead it affirm affirmatively allows it allows it and therein lies the rub vague broad terms of service applied f by powerful companies like facebook with no transparency and no clear avenues for appeal as amory points out there is an additional problem congress spe special treatment of intellectual property section 512 of the DMCA gives websites, chat rooms, and, and other online providers a safe harbor from liability for copywriting, copyright infri infringement committed by the users, but only if they comply with takedown notices that do not require any advantage advanced judicial determination and that are often mass generated by spiders and busts employed by this entertainment indus industry or its higher hands they are certainly in fire in infrig infringing infringing contents must be taken down ex expeditiously and only reinstated after 10 days if the person who posted its files a counter not not a counter notice section 512 has leg legislative gift to the media industry is bedstones the power to suppress online content for at least 10 days and often permanently permanently simply on the basis of a demand late later L later later with no determination whether the company even owns the copywriting the copyright whether it applies to the content in question or whether there might be a defense to copyright in fragment such as fair use section 512 gives a strong ins incentive to social media sites search engines and the like and the like to remote coven content even though it is questionable whether they should be liab liable for copyright fragments by the users in the first place there is not much case law on this issue the existing pro the existing process procedures are inconsistent but several of their of them hold hold that service providers are not liable the case against liability is even stronger for search engines that simply provides links intellectual pro property disputes have been a major free speech issue at least since the advent advent of the internet and section 512 by encouraging censorship tips the scales too heavily too heavily against free speech third what left of times versus sullivan's finally with free speech 
policy making having shifted to private companies to legislation like section 230 and 512 and as Ma Amori argues to international forums what role is left for the U US courts and for landmarks like New York Times Co Corpor Corpor uh, Corporation versus Sullivan quite a bit I maintain First, as Amory notes, today's generations of social media lawyers are inspired by the spirit of Times versus Sullivan, a spirit that stands well beyond the holdings of the case. Justice Brennan, stirringly quotable words about the un un uninhibited, uninhibited robust and wide open debate essential to democracy have become like other great supreme courts perorations a part of our lit literature and culture but times where sullivan has its weaknesses as justices black and douglas pointed out in their concurrence the actual ma mal malice test invites intrusive, intrus, intrusive, lengthy and expensive discovery into the notes, the confidential sources and the state of minds of reporters and editors. editors. Black and Douglas made a persuasive argument for absolute immunity for liability for def defamatory statements about public officials. So we can honor Sullivan even while in providing upon it state legislation, state legislatures can go beyond actual malice and simply eliminate liability for defamation or public of public officials. Our social media policymakers can make clear that they do not censor potentially defamatory content if it if it involves criticism of government. Indeed, they can extend the, 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 the policy to criticism of public figures, just as Sullivan was eventually extend, extended. And they can extend this policy to other torts, such as inflection or of emotional di distress. And the principles of Sullivan were extended when Hostel magazine publishes a crude cartoon mocking the pretensions of the evangelist Jerry Falwell. Today, of course, it is something. It is sometimes difficult to, critic to criticize government policy, policy because we do not we do not know what the policy is. Disclosure by. Whitles Blower, Chelsea Making, and Andrew Snowden have revealed revealed secret torture practice, torture practice, extrajudici extrajudicial murders through secret drone strikes and a massive systems of secret government surveillance. Social media sites can play a positive role in the unique and worldly new medium of worldwide human communication that is the internet not only by trimming censorship policies to a minimum but also by fostering robust and wide open access to the information necessary for a fu functioning democracy